music with Ryan. Thanks for joining me. This week's featured lesson is a Bill Monroe standard, Little Georgia Rose in the key of A. And you can kind of do it in any key you'd like. I got the capo on the second fret playing out of G position. So maybe open G is good for your vocal or B or B flat or whatever it may be. We're here in the key of A. And for this arrangement, kind of what I was thinking when I was writing it and um, the reason for creating for this lesson was, you know, for those of you that are beginning flat pickers, or getting to the advanced beginner stage, or for somebody that's kind of shifting gears in their guitar life and they're coming from rock or jazz and they want to learn how to flat pick. Well, this is kind of why I made this arrangement. It gets a standard bluegrass tune, and it's got a lot of standard things we're going to do on the guitar. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of droning, you know, that... Um that sort of thing. And that's really common in bluegrass guitar, right? We're we don't have the violin or the banjo, we need to fill up some space. So we're going to do some common nuances and subtleties about playing bluegrass that uh, if you're looking to get into, again, the bluegrass guitar, might be a good idea to um, check this out. So we're going to do the verse and the chorus as well, So you, because in the jam they usually do the solo on the chorus, so you're, you're ready for either one. And it's a straight ahead, for the most part, straight ahead melody, nothing too fancy, a few little eighth note runs, but we're again hitting the melody on the head throughout most of the piece. So if you'd like to purchase the full length version, you can click the link down below or up above and it will shoot you on to my website and there you can do so. It'll come with about 35 to 40 minutes of video, PDF tabs, and five backing tracks from 120 all the way to 200 so you can really work your speeds up and get ready for the jam. I also have some live practice tracks where I play through the arrangement, slow and medium tempo all the way through just up close. You can kind of see it all a little better that way as well. And um, if you really like the way I teach and approach learning guitar, there's another link down there should be for memberships. And you can, if you join for a yearly or monthly fee, access my whole library of over 300 lessons and growing. I come out with one each week. We've got a beginner course, a rhythm course. In February 2017, I'll be releasing a developing fretboard awareness course. It'll all be all about soloing with scales and chord shapes and exercises. Okay, so pretty cool stuff. I'm always working on the site. And again, if you like my approach and my song selection, you got a lot of old time, bluegrass, country, got a little bit of blues over there as well. So check it out. For now, we're going to start walking through this lesson here for Little Georgia Rose and the key A. We're going to throw the tabs up on the screen and bring the camera on in. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy. All right, so let's go ahead and start breaking down Little Georgia Rose here in the key of A. Capo's on the second fret. And so when I play a G chord, we are sounding. A chord okay so we're in the key of A and again if you can you can put the cape wherever you want if it fits your vocal you can take it off and play just in G or you can move it up B flat B whatever you'd like to do but uh, yeah A is a good key for me to sing this one in so that's where I have it and um, any markings on the bottom of the staff are pick directions so really watch those closely your downs and ups get those those uh, need to be exact to really work up a lot of speed and clarity um, and any markings above the staff, if there's little numbers, they'll be left hand fingerings, okay? And there'll be a few of those to make sure you pull off the arrangement. So let me pr play the first four measures for you, and then we'll break them down pretty slow here. So it starts on beat two, got a little pickup in there. Um, yeah, so here it is. So one, two, three, four, one. on the first beat of measure five so it wasn't on the screen there but three four one okay so we got 
lot of droning going on. It's really common in bluegrass guitar and bluegrass music to kind of play it like this. This is this whole arrangement is going to be kind of again for a beginner flat picker or someone who's new, maybe they're experienced player, but they're getting into bluegrass and they're wanting kind of some of the nuances about it. Well, here are some very typical things that players will do because we got to fill up a lot of space. Yeah, we don't have the luxuries of the banjo or the mandolin or the violin or mandolin, I guess. But yeah, violin's got the bow. You know, the banjo can roll, so we have to fill up space, and we're gonna do that by droning. And I'm gonna play. You know, again, this is a basic arrangement or yeah, advanced beginner. Um, so we're gonna do some of that. Um, the first measure, though, we got the rest, and then uh, eighth notes on the open D, and then a quarter note, and second fret D. So. Go one. Down, up, down, down. And then the next measure, I hit the open G. And then I'm going to get up there the third finger. I'm going to get on the fifth fret of the D string. Okay, fifth fret in relation to the capo. Fifth fret. And that's going to be the same note as the open G. Okay, so this is where we get the little drone effect. The whole measure. And we're going to be doing this a lot throughout the piece. So. Again, same exact note. They're unison. They're not octaves. They're unison. Same note. Okay. That measure exactly. Okay. And the next measure, go right back to an open G, and then two more eighth notes on the open G, and then we slide to the fourth fret. Okay, now it's a quick slide. You don't have to throw the slides in there. I know some of the beginners might have trouble with the slides and stuff like that. You can just right to it. But it's not like an eighth note. There's nothing there. It's got to be just a real quick thing. And then back to an open G. So that measure. Second fret D, open D, and then fifth fret A, which is a D note, which is gonna be the drone again. I'm using my third finger to do so. And then I do two eighth notes, open D, fifth fret A. Okay, then unison notes. Okay, and that really helps fill up the sound and get a little drive into our bluegrass guitar playing. One, two, three. And ready, go. One, ready, go. Okay, and I'm pretty smooth with those slides because I've been playing a long time, but you know, it does add a little something extra. So really focus on it when you feel comfortable with the timing and add that in there, and it will give it a little extra um, energy, right? Okay. Let me play all four of those measures. And, and some of these concepts we're going to see again, so we'll brush over them a little quicker the next time we see them. Um, so just so you know. Here's the first four again. Two, three, four, one. that phrase on measure five with a open D. Okay, those are the first four measures. Let's move on to the next three measures here. Five, six, and seven. They sound like this. Ready, go. Oh, I'm sorry. Ready, go. And I landed again on the first beat of measure eight. It kind of completes the phrase. Okay, so that's why I did it that way. Okay, so measure five, we got the open D, and then two eighth notes, open second fret, then open G, and then fourth fret G. Okay, pretty simple measure. One, two, and three, four. And I want 
want to get that fourth fret note with my second finger. And then I move on, and then third fret on the B, and I'm, my first finger is right there ready to go for it. And then that, play that note again, bounce off the open G, back to the third fret B, and then three five. So one, two, and three, four, and, okay, almost all on the B string there. Ready, go. Three, those two measures, five and six, ready, go. Okay, and the next measure, now I do a little eighth note run here. Um, you know, I, I have I have a few of them here and there where I do you know eighth note runs, and that's really common in bluegrass. But it's hard to continue to do it measure after measure. So I just stuck in like a measure here and there, or a little phrase here and there of consecutive eighth note runs. Um, and here's one that's really common and really good to use. So. It's okay, I know there's a slide in the middle, and it creates a double upstroke. So what happens here for you beginners is that hammer-ons and pull-offs and sometimes slides will take the place of a pick direction. Okay, and that's what we have here. It's taking the place of a pick direction. Um, and that creates a double down or a double up. Okay, so we got third on the B, fourth on the G, back to third, back to four, and then, so that was an upstroke, and then I slide down to two. And then it's another upstroke on an open G. And then fourth fret D, open G. So you may need to work on that measure. Ready, go. Down, up, down, up, up, down, up. And if the slide really throws you off, just put a pick direction. Take out the slide, put a pick direction in there. Down, up. put that in there. You can take them out or put them in. Um, pick, pick, pick. Okay? You can just be all down and up. But I put the slide in there. Okay. Again, it helps add a little bit, a um, little bit of energy in there. So, those three measures. Two, ready, go.